Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Kickstarter to investigate the Xano Nano drone project, SpaceX may fly again later this week, Lockheed Martin celebrates the success of their C-130 Hercules. I'm Brie Cross, it's December 16th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Have you ever wondered what happens when a crowdfunding type campaign is successful, but the product being funded goes down the tubes? Apparently, Kickstarter is wondering about this as well, regarding one of its most funded projects in the site's history. The Xano Nano drone pulled in more than $3.5 million in pledges from over 12,000 backers, but the project has folded after shipping only 600 of the 15,000 tiny UAVs promised to backers. Xano promoted the UAV, which would fit in the palm of your hand as the world's most sophisticated nano drone, aerial photo, and HD video capture platform. Kickstarter has hired investigative journalist Mark Harris to look into why the project failed. Those who pledged money to the program are unlikely to get a refund, according to a report posted to TechSpot. A post is planned for the website Medium in January, which hopes to chronicle the Xano project from start to finish. In an update posted on the Kickstarter website, Xano made excuses for technical challenges occurring with the project, and it apologized to those who have supported it. SpaceX may launch its first Falcon 9 rocket since suffering a launch failure in June of last year. The launch currently planned for December 19th would carry 11 Orbcom OG2 satellites into orbit, according to Orbcom. The loss of the ISS resupply mission on June 28th was traced to the failure of a strut in the rocket's upper stage oxidizer tank. SpaceX has reinforced those struts for future launches. This launch will take place on an upgraded and slightly more powerful version of the Falcon 9. SpaceX would like to attempt to land the Falcon 9 booster back at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station for possible reuse, but founder Elon Musk did not say whether that landing attempt has been approved. This launch would be the seventh for SpaceX in 2015. After the break, the C-130 Hercules delivers the goods for Lockheed Martin. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The U.S. Air Force accepted its first delivery of a Lockheed Martin C-130 Hercules aircraft on December 9, 1956, and thus the legacy began. Lockheed Martin has now delivered the 2500th C-130 Hercules from its Marietta, Georgia production facility. This landmark Hercules is an HC-130J Combat King II personnel recovery aircraft assigned to the U.S. Air Force's 71st Rescue Squadron located at Moody Air Force Base in Valdosta, Georgia. The U.S. Air Force is the largest user of the aircraft and the C-130s are operated from 68 nations. The global fleet has collectively logged more than 22 million flight hours. The current production model is the C-130J Super Hercules, the choice for 16 nations and 19 different operators. The Super Hercules worldwide fleet has more than 1.3 million flight hours to its credit. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. E 
NDAA AirVenture is so expansive that one week is barely enough to take it all in. In this 2009 video, we managed to squeeze it into 150 seconds. Search Oshkosh in 150 seconds on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Island Airlines shutters its operation. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX100 and ATX100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Island Airlines, which has been flying for 24 years to the island of Nantucket, abruptly closed its doors last Friday. The closure also affects Cape and Island Air Freight. No reason was given, but it's reported the company was headed for bankruptcy. The aerodrome and its partner, the city of Boulder City, Nevada, have announced the opening of the world's first commercial drone port and teaching facility in Boulder City. A drone port is a facility tailored specifically to unmanned air systems. The Airline Pilots Association has praised the FAA's efforts to track ownership of unmanned aircraft through its registration regulations. They say registration is a tool to help ensure that owners and operators fly their aircraft safely in the skies they share with airliners. A $75 million lawsuit has been filed in South Florida against jet dealer Aero Toy Store for allegedly defaulting on a loan in 2010. The Aero Toy Store website currently lists an inventory of 11 executive jets and three helicopters. German balloonist David Strassmann beat 67 other pilots to be crowned the new FAI World Air Games hot air ballooning champion last week. Also on the podium in Dubai were Belgium's Steve Vegels taking second and Stefan Verbelli from Switzerland in third place. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. It looks like GoPro and Santa Claus couldn't make the connection. The sport camera maker says it won't be releasing its own aircraft until sometime next year. As of now, there are no images posted of the actual aircraft, just one video said to be taken from a prototype GoPro UAV. However, when their product becomes available, it will be named the Karma. GoPro had previously announced that it would be building its own aircraft and stabilization system. In the video released at that time, GoPro was adamant that the images presented had not been stabilized in post-production and that the video was captured by using a developmental prototype of GoPro's quadcopter and stabilization system. GoPro says on its Karma webpage that the new aircraft is coming in 2016, and if you join their email list, you could win one of 100 Karma UAVs they'll be giving away in conjunction with the launch. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.